Former X-Men vs. Avenger, Hawkeye vs. Deadpool, this is happening, folks! Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we're reading dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. It's Halloween, and everyone's going to Hawkeye's house. He gives out the big candy bars. It's a Halloween legend! Except once the first kids knock on the door and he hands them their candy, they look sadly at the fun-sized candy bars. It's fun-sized, Clint Barton explains. Well, since it is a legend, a certain mercenary named Wade Wilson and his family arrive wanting those big candy bars. Clint explains that he is a tad hard of hearing because he took out his hearing aid, and them all wearing masks is making it difficult for him to read their lips. And that's when he notices the chopped hamburger of a man standing nearby. Isn't that Deadpool? Technically tonight, I'm Deadpool! Then Deadpool's daughter Ellie asks why Clint's candy is so small. It's fun-sized, he says, trying to shut the door, but Deadpool pokes his head through the door. You aren't holding out on us, are you, Clint? No, Clint says begrudgingly. Deadpool eyeballs Clint, and Clint gets ready to fight, and then Deadpool backs off. I'm just messing! Maybe we can hang out after all of this trick-or-treating? So Clint slams the door in his face. He must have misheard me and thought I said goodbye. The night goes on, and Clint gets a knock at the door, and this time it's a poor man looking for help because he has a problem with the mob. But Clint slams the door in his face, telling him to go to the cops or something. The man runs outside where he sees Deadpool walking past, and he drops a flash drive into his candy pail, telling him that it was a coconut candy. And as Deadpool and his family are walking away, they hear gunshots going off behind them. That guy must have really hated coconut. Wade, Preston tells him. Deadpool throws off his breakaway pants and gets his guns ready. Bye, Daddy, Ellie tells him. I told you, Ellie. When we're out in public, call me Deadpool. He runs over to the scene of the murder to find Clint Barton already there and a man in the Punisher's costume standing there pinned to a van by Clint's arrows. Deadpool walks over and tries to remove the man's mask, but Clint tells him to just go away and screw up something else. Until Clint is hit over the back of the head by a man in a Daredevil costume. The man in the Punisher outfit jumps on Deadpool and begins biting him. And Clint gets the man off of Deadpool and threatens to take this fake Punisher to the real Punisher. And that's when the fake Punisher hits Clint upside the head and Clint accidentally pulls the pin on the grenade on the man's chest. Clint runs for cover, but luckily it was only a smoke grenade. And Deadpool says, he's starting into a fog monster. But then the fake Punisher opens fire on Clint and Deadpool jumps in the path, taking all of the bullets to the chest. The man runs off while Clint checks on Deadpool, but Deadpool has a healing factor. So Clint chases down the man instead and using his last arrow because his bow is cracked, he gets the man on the leg stopping him from fleeing. Then, the fake Punisher states, I am a patriot. And he walks in front of a truck dying. Deadpool explains that the fake Daredevil took the dead guy's bag and ran off while Deadpool was healing. So Deadpool and Clint go get some hot dogs and explain the situation to the police. Clint feels terrible that he shut the door in the man's face. He thought he was just another nut job trying to bother him. The two of them decide to go to Deadpool's apartment where Wade digs through his candy and finds the flash drive. He plugs it in and they both see the guy who died, explaining that he stole a list of every S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Clint grabs the laptop and shuts it. I'll handle this, Deadpool. And Deadpool hits him over the jaw! Clint rubs his face. What was that for? So, uh, yeah, don't take this the wrong way, but I thought that that punch was gonna knock you out and I would take the drive and save the day without any dead weight. DEAD WEIGHT! Clint says, jumping into fight. You see, the whole problem with this list of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents is that there's another individual who wants it, and she has a doctor on her side that can brainwash people. Black Cat. And she can make millions off of a list like that. Back with her heroes, Kate Bishop walks into the apartment to see both Clint and Deadpool sitting there on the floor after a fight. Kate Bishop is another Hawkeye. Not the Hawkeye that you might know, but she does use the name. She enters the apartment and comments that Deadpool has the best Freddy Krueger makeup ever! And Clint fills her in that that's Deadpool. That's his face. She sticks up both her thumbs. Oh cool! Happy Halloween! Deadpool gets really sad about this. Damn it, I should have gone as Freddy Krueger. And with that, Clint and Deadpool are working on this together. They start by going to the morgue to see the body, but the coroner tells them they need to go away. Deadpool asks Clint, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Unfortunately, yeah. Clint begins calling his contacts to try and get them inside, and Deadpool knocks the guy out! We agreed on this! While they go inside and get the guy's address, Kate is back at Clint's apartment trying to get an Uber, but it's 42 minutes away. She then watches the video on Clint's laptop and recognizes where that guy is, so she starts running across town. Meanwhile, Deadpool and Clint have made it to the address thanks to their own Uber driver to find a mental hospital. Inside the hospital, Black Cat is getting ready to burn it down and she sends the brainwashed patients out to fight against the superheroes. They're doing okay until the giant fake Daredevil shows back up and begins flinging Clint through a wall head first. He looks around the room that his head is now in and he sees the Black Cat with a gun at his head. Then the fake Daredevil flings him into another wall and Black Cat simply has to ask, 
How is he an Avenger? Deadpool solves the problem though by turning on the sprinklers, pulling out an electrical cord, and shoving it into the ground. Everyone gets shocked and knocked out in the main room. While this is going on, Kate is breaking into the old location that the dead guy was at, and it is there that she finds Adsit, a friend of Deadpool's and a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And she beats him up not knowing who he is. Once he explains, she shyly smiles. I'm not under arrest, right? Clint and Deadpool wake back up and they begin heading downstairs where they need to explain everything to the police again. But without much of a lead to go on, other than the black cat is involved, Deadpool decides to head back to check on his daughter. And Clint goes home with the plan that they both meet up in the morning and get back on this. But when Clint goes home, there's a mysterious person waiting for him. The next day, Clint, Deadpool, and Kate all meet with S.H.I.E.L.D. to discuss how bad this problem really is. A list of every S.H.I.E.L.D. agent is out there, and Black Cat wants it and has an army of brainwashed goons at her disposal. Now what? Well, Clint has an idea. To set up a trap and everyone gets moving. While they stand on a rooftop looking down at the crowd, Deadpool asks Clint why he gave up his Sky Cycle. And Clint explains that it's currently in the Avengers garage. But Deadpool wants to know why! That's when they see Black Cat and her crew tracking the phone of the guy who died. And Kate shouts over the comms that they're here. Typhoid Mary begins by lighting Deadpool on fire and taking Kate's arrows. But luckily Clint is on the rooftop getting ready to help until Black Cat kicks him off the roof. He calls up to her to stay right there. He'll be right back as he plummets down to the street down below. He buried an arrow into the building to stop his fall and Deadpool jumps into battle with Mary so she lights a bus on fire so that the villains can get away. With their distraction in place, the villains get the heck out of Dodge and they leave Deadpool, Clint, and Kate behind. So, after a lecture from S.H.I.E.L.D., Deadpool takes everyone to his place for some video games while they reformulate a plan. They would have been fine gaming except that the ghost of Benjamin Franklin and a naked wizard walked through Deadpool's place scaring Kate and Clint. So they all grab an Uber back to the deceased guy's house to see if they missed anything and that's when they find the woman that he had watch his cat when he took off. And the cat has the flash drive with the list on it! They got it! Except Clint stabs Deadpool, then knocks out Kate, and he runs for it with the flash drive. As it turns out, when the mysterious woman came to his apartment, she worked for Black Cat, and they brainwashed Clint to work for them. After Kate wakes up, she pulls the knife out of Deadpool, and they begin chasing the now evil Hawkeye. He grabs a motorcycle, so they grab a bicycle with a carriage in the back, and Deadpool drives while Kate is firing arrows at Hawkeye. Since it's obviously not working, Deadpool calls up another Ooper, and they all jump in. Deadpool tells the Ooper to follow the bike and drive on the sidewalks, but when the guy refuses, Deadpool puts a gun to his cheek. Kate continues to fire arrows and throws Clint to the ground. They then run over to him, but Deadpool stops her. Don't put Clint into a corner. The last brainwashed guy that they did that to killed himself. Deadpool tells her they just need to follow Clint now. Clint makes his way back to Black Cat's hideout with the flash drive and he proudly presents it back to them. Luckily, Deadpool and Kate now know where they need to go and Deadpool calls his guy with all of the guns. And then he hands a very worried looking Kate a rocket propelled grenade launcher. While Black Cat is beginning to load up and copy the files, Kate is walking on the rooftop near them. As she begins to try and figure out where the folder is, Kate fires the rocket into the electrical substation nearby. Then she cheers. That was awesome! And then she realizes what she just did. I just blew up New York. While this is happening, Deadpool breaks into the Avengers storage to take out a little outfit and a sky cycle. To make things even better for our heroes, the flash from the explosion snapped Clint out of his brainwashed mode, and he turns on Black Cat, hitting her cell phone with an arrow. Then Kate comes crashing through the window, and Deadpool comes riding up on a sky cycle in an old Hawkeye costume until he discovers why Clint put it into storage. The stabilizer is broken, and he crash lands it, yelling, Wee! Everyone goes crazy, shooting bullets and arrows at each other until Deadpool comes crashing into the party in his right uniform. He apologizes, stating that he would have been here sooner, except that he had to change. The Hawkeye costume is getting all clingy in all of the no-no places. As Black Cat and her goons try to escape, each Hawkeye fires an arrow, and Deadpool jumps off the top floor. He lands just as the goons are throwing the flash drive to Black Cat, catching the flash drive, and then the arrows come down, pinning everyone to the stairs. In all of the commotion, Black Cat walked out the front door, pretending that she was brainwashed. Deadpool and Kate give the secret event Avenger High Five, and that's when Kate informs him that he's still not an Avenger. But once they go outside, they can see that S.H.I.E.L.D. is arresting Black Cat's goons, and that's when they discover that wasn't the Black Cat. It's Dawn of Justice. I mean, Dawn Massat of the Justice Department. And Black Cat is watching from the roof of a nearby building. The three heroes walk back to Clint's place where they fist bump and Clint tells them that he needs to clean up the bloodstain in front of his apartment, cause this is on him. He shut the door in a man's face and it changed a lot of lives. Now they do leave this open for a potential sequel and honestly, I loved this book and would love to see a sequel to it. But what did you think about this? It's kind of a weird story that seems to take place between a lot of things happening to Deadpool and even what happens to Hawkeye. I'm Benny the Comic Historian and I'll see you guys next time right here. Thank you.